Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Postgame Report podcast. I'm JVB, and as always, thank you for checking us out either on YouTube or iTunes. And if you haven't done so, subscribe, and you can get notification whenever a new Postgame Report is available. Now, Microsoft, I believe it was last night. I could be wrong because I've been doing a lot of overtime, so the days seem to blend together, at least the last four days. So I've somewhat been out of the loop, but Microsoft has a Game Pass. Now this service is a subscription-based service. You pay $10 a month, very similar to EA Access. I believe EA Access, you could do $5 a month or something like that. I've done it a few times just so I could play a specific demo. For example, whenever the new Madden comes out, I'll pay the $5 and I get to play Madden on the Xbox One for a week before it actually comes out on other platforms. Now, this is a little different than what Microsoft is doing with its Game Pass because EA Access will not put a game like Star Wars Battlefront, which is still fairly new, they won't put it immediately on release. Microsoft plans, for example, when Sea of Thieves comes out, On the day of release, it is going to be available on the Microsoft Game Pass. And so for $10 a month, you can have brand new IPs or let me scratch that. Not brand new IPs. Well, Sea of Thieves is a brand new IP. So you'll have a big release or a big title like, let's say, Crackdown 3, Sea of Thieves or State of Decay 2. They'll be available on day one possibly even Halo 6 on day one on this Game Pass feature. Now, once again, $10 a month. That, in my opinion, is pretty good because you can pay the $10, do like I do. For one month, you play this brand new title, and once you're done, if you want to continue the service, you can do so. Now, let me just be clear. Brand new IPs or brand new launch titles are not all you're going to get. You're going to get a vast library of games, whether they're 360 games or Xbox One games. So overall, it's a good deal. Now on my Twitter, which is at JVB, I had stated that this feature kind of tells me or this announcement tells me that this specific Game Pass service has not exactly hit the type of subscription base that Microsoft most likely wanted. And that by adding brand new releases on release day gives it obviously more, gives you or us more of an incentive to go and pay the $10 a month for this specific service, which to the consumer, this is extremely, extremely good. It's an extremely good bargain. There's no denying that. But in my opinion, based on experience and being in the gaming industry for so long and being a quote unquote gamer for over 30 plus years, I believe that because they're not hit, they have not as of now hit a subscription base or a figure that they intended. I believe that they threw this incentive in there and that as it stands, this won't hurt the developers. And in this case, the publisher, which is Microsoft, it won't hurt physical sales because that subscription base right now, as as it stands, is not such a number that it will affect physical sales. Now, let's say 75% of Xbox One owners decided to do this Game Pass service and just pay $10 a month and forget about buying brand new games at retail. Now you're going to see how these uh, brand new IPs and launch day titles, you're going to see how they suffer. So obviously if the number increases of number of subscriptions increase, then you're going to see a whole new strategy. So they have not stated 
because Halo 6, I just threw that out there. It has not even been officially announced. We know we're going to get one, thankfully. But we don't. We just don't know when. So I just threw that out there because imagine Halo 6 coming out and or Gears of War 5. And all you got to do is pay a subscription base uh, of $10. And you have access to a brand new Halo 6 release title. It, I've seen some people, as usual, bash this. I've seen some people damage control it. I've seen some people be up in arms about the possibility of the industry going this way. I truly don't believe that. There's still a need for physical copies. And just like we do with our uh, consoles, which so far are hardware-based, not they're not right now a subscription like let's say an amazon stick where you buy a device you attach it through an hdmi port on your television and you have access to all the software a lot of us have predicted that maybe microsoft would do this down the line have some type of set top box and just have a service that is available on different devices is this microsoft's entry into such a method who knows who knows what microsoft plans to do because let's face it microsoft is de this generation has not lit the world on fire and right now the xbox division is really not represented correctly and so they need to make waves and it's funny it's also funny that the day microsoft uh, as a matter of fact it was on the 23rd of January of this month, yesterday, as a matter of fact. The same day that Microsoft reveals this new strategy, Sony goes ahead and releases a brand new trailer for God of War. And also on April 20th, 2018, 420, of course, we are going to get a brand new God of War. That is the release date. So Sony, I don't know if it was strategically or just coincidence or maybe microsoft tried to do the same and it seemed like one or the other was trying to take away the heat of these specific announcements and of course being that we're all gamers and the main reason for owning a video game console is to play video games it seemed like more positive or or the biggest positive reaction or reception was the Gears of War, I mean, God of War, excuse me, God of War release date and brand new story trailer. Hopefully I didn't say Gears of War instead of God of War. I tend to do that a lot. So on the video game front, we have uh, some big news. So let me know in the comment section what you think about the brand new God of War trailer that they showed, the release date, and if Sony was purposely trying to overshadow Microsoft's new announcement regarding Game Pass and their new strategy of adding brand new releases in the service. And if you think it's too expensive or you think it's priced correctly, and should Sony do something very similar? The fact that you can download these games so you can play them offline, that is really big. That gives it instantly an edge over what sony has with their game rental uh, with sony's game rental uh, their game rental service excuse me you have to have internet connectivity to play it it's streamed you can't download it into your hard drive and that sucks so let me know let me know in the comment section what you think speaking of feedback i want to give a shout out to mud shanker that's his Twitter handle, at Mudshanker. Give him a follow if you're not following him. And uh, he sent me an awesome email. Unfortunately, I don't have the email with me. Uh, the way everything's set up on my desk, I can't... The way I'm sitting right now, literally, I have to stay right here. Or else I'm going to move the, the cable on my microphone and cause some type of distortion that you're going to hear. But Mudshanker, thank you very much. Uh, the gist of his email was just letting me know that he 
used to listen to me during the days of Particular and somewhat got to grow throughout the years as I grew uh, through podcasting. And he used to take long trips to work and he used to listen to, to, the, to the episodes of uh, either Particular or the Postgame Report. And he said he has an 11 year old daughter who's basically the same age or you know i've been podcasting uh the same amount of years yeah it's been a, it's been over a decade and uh, appreciates the new direction that pgr has taken we've steered cleared of all the council bull crap and i know a lot of people somewhat associate pgr with maybe even igniting this whole console war uh which is a crock of shit because you know these trolls this, these console wars have been around a very long time uh, pgr has been different in the sense that of course we've given our, our honest opinions about consoles we own whether it's the xbox one the P playstation 4 the nintendo switch so on and so on not just those specific consoles but the whole the whole console war thing has uh, worn thin with me. It's it's be, it's gotten boring. Every once in a while on Twitter, I will jump into a conversation. Just if I see that it's lighthearted, and people are snapping on each other, making fun of each other, or, or sending funny uh, gifs or whatever, and I'll join into something like that. Uh, I'll I'll state an opinion like I did earlier with the whole Microsoft Game Pass or Xbox Game Pass. But overall, as I stated a few months back, gaming uh, has turned into a whole different beast as far as the type of community you see on social networks. The culture, which is what PGR focuses on, and more, of course, uh, the culture has, is stronger than ever, more creative than ever before, and huge, enormous. So... PGR, as far as gaming and the culture, the video game culture, the geek culture, we're always going to be there in the forefront. When it comes to this whole console war shit, uh, no, we don't, we don't really want to pay attention to that anymore. At least I don't. Because when you sit back and you realize how stupid people look getting so crazy, it's one thing to troll, it's another thing to go on, on YouTube and make a two-hour rant about something so it's insignificant as how many frames a, a certain console can produce more than the other it's just you know you're not analyzing you're throwing emotions and, and wasting people's time wasting your time and energy and looking really dumb so there's people that analyze things that are able to articulate and speak and and, and approach uh, an audio podcast like this or a YouTube video and speak in a way where you're explaining something to, to your audience or you're teaching something to your audience. There's not a lot of that out there. There, there are people who do it and those are the people I follow. So all the other trash guys who call them for themselves professionals on their fucking podcast or guys who call themselves the, Xbox, oh, what is it, the best bot or, or the godfather of Xbox or crap game. I mean, these guys are pure trash. So that's why I stay away from their stuff. They, they do nothing but kill brain cells every time they speak. There are people, though, who are good at what they do. They educate. They communicate. They articulate well, as I stated. And they get their point across without resorting to drama hatred and lies so pgr has never been the type to lie just to prove a point and you guys know that i don't need to even repeat that but bud shanker thank you very much that that was a freaking awesome email and i appreciate the fact that you've been listening for that long that's amazing that truly is because you know PGR has not been the most stable. We have not been the most consistent, the most entertaining, or the best uh, podcast. 
So, but that, that's life, you know. You're not nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. As as you know, in social networks, a lot of people like to act like they're fucking perfect. But their life is perfect, and they'll throw all these pictures or they'll act a certain way to post pictures of money and things like that. Those are the people I stay away from because they're full of shit. But uh, quickly. You know, I have, I, uh, you guys know that my son, Justin, uh, he's the world to me. Uh, so is my wife. So is my entire family, my friends. But my son and I, we have a, a special bond, of course. He's the only child. 16 years old. He's been with the same girl for about nine months. Uh, when, you're, when you're a parent, you feel what your kids feel. You know when something's wrong. And when they're going through life situations that every one of us have gone through being relationships. Uh, we've all been through relationships as a teenager and they can be very, very difficult. We all remember that. And he's going through that right now. And I can sense it. We've been talking. We've been giving him advice. And he, I could tell him in his face that it's really bothering him. It's really hurting him. Uh, him and his girlfriend have not argued, but he, he, he's been getting like brushed off and these two have always hung out together. Very cute couple. They constantly, when they're together, they, they can hold a conversation for hours and enjoy each other's company. And they're both in the swimming team and she's an extremely smart girl. My son is extremely smart. Uh, he's very mellow. Just like like my son, they they kind of they feed off each other, you know. Uh, and so he's been getting the cold shoulder lately. He's uh, been worried, so I had to teach him or preach to be patient with women. And I told him, "Look, you're 16. This is the age where people are are growing. They're discovering themselves. High school is all about discovering yourself." Discovering who you like, what you don't like, what you're going to be in the future. Discovering how hard it is to advance to another grade and have more work thrown at you. And so I had to constantly remind him that, listen, you know, there's a reason why not everybody marries their high school sweetheart. It just isn't that easy. When you're growing as individuals together, the two individuals might not necessarily feel the same way for each other as they used to. And today, my wife and I would tell him, look, you know, give her, send her a text, let her know you got to talk. And without sounding confrontational, let, let her know that you've been bothered by some of her, uh, her actions or lack of actions because she's been kind of cold with him and that he's not going to, you know, stand around and wait for her to, to decide when she, she, uh, this, you know, is ready to uh, give him some type of uh, indication of, if, of something, if something is wrong, they actually did talk about it. And she told him, look, nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. I just, uh, you know, been busy and, and, I, you know, I also had to remind them that, uh, you know, this girl comes from a wealthy family. And they're pretty intense people. Her parents are. And I told them, look, people don't live across the street from Central Park by accident. They do it because they are intense people. They focus, you know, our parents most likely individually focused on their career because our parents are in their 50s. I'm only 45. So obviously they had kids late. Obviously, that's an indication that they started, uh, they concentrated on their careers for a very long time before deciding to have a family. They only have two children. And they have, I believe they're two to three years apart. So I told them, dude, you're learning. You're, you're, number one, you're, you're learning about who you are, 
And you're also learning how to deal with her changes and her personality. And maybe her parents are pushing her a little more. And her parents are really cool. They love my son. But at the end of the day, they love her, their daughter even more. And they're going to want her to progress and be intense and, and study, study, study. I told them, dude, as hard as and, and as much as this might not make sense, you got to be patient. You got to block it out. And you have to meet her challenge and match her intensity and, and see how she, you know, use her as an example of how to study and how to block everything out. Because that's what she does. When she gets home, she turns off her phone or she leaves it in another room. She, she will not text my son back until she's done. And I told him, that is a great thing. <laughs> so use that as an example. Follow her lead. And use that. Use it against her. You know, take it as a personal challenge. Say, look, if she could do it, I could do it. It's going to make them both better. I said, if, if you guys don't work out, at least you guys can be friends. And you never know in the future what happens after that. So I wanted I wanted him to know that there's there's a middle ground. And he and of course being sixteen and having your first girlfriend, you think, Oh my god, if I don't have her in my life anymore, what am I gonna do? We've all been there. It's a horrible feeling. But I let him know that there's a middle ground. There's the possibility that they could remit they could become closer friends, stay in contact, and and you never know. Maybe in their 20s or in their 30s, when they're ready and their careers are established, maybe that, that first crush, uh, that, that those feelings rekindle or resurface, and they get married. Who knows? I told them, you never know. Life is about what you make it. You don't look back. You don't move forward without an action. You know, his problem is that he's thinking too much about things that have not happened. He's looking too far ahead about things that really have no effect on what's going on now. So I told him, take care of the situations that are going now or everything that's in front of you. If you have doubt, if you want to get to the bottom of this stuff, with, with his girlfriend get to it get it out there once there's some type of communication and the situation presents himself then he could take action i told him don't begin plan uh don't assume oh my god this is it it's over let me get the press no i told him if something happens and you break up then you start worrying about what what to do next. But until that happens, focus on the necessities and use her example of blocking everything out, being intense about her studies. Use that as a as a as a as a platform or, or or a template because she's doing it the right way. <laughs> so um you know, I'm hoping that because it's his girlfriend and he goes, oh, yeah, you know, that's a good idea. Uh, but, you know, as a parent, as I say, he's the, the only child. And uh, he and I, we have a strong bond. And I could feel it. You know, we all know when something's wrong with our, when our children are not feeling themselves. And, uh, you know, I figured I'd throw that out there. Maybe in the comment section, you guys could uh, let me know if you've been through similar situations and what was the final outcome or maybe even give my son, son some advice and I'll let him know but I'm going to wrap it up because uh, dinner is about to be served but as always I thank you for checking out the post game report remember you can subscribe on iTunes or on YouTube so until next week I'm Jose Betancourt Talk to you soon. Take care.